To finish well, I also encourage you to emulate a prophecy made about our Lord Jesus found in Isaiah 50, verse 7. For the Lord God helps me, therefore I am not disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. The principle of Jesus Christ setting his face like flint meant that he would be undeterred in his mission to submit himself to the Father and to accomplish the great work of redemption at the cross. As this is applied to us today, it means a keen resolve that nothing the Antichrist and world system does will dissuade you from pursuing Jesus Christ. To be distracted in these days or using alcohol or other substances to mask the pain you are in is not going to help you finish well. And in fact, it might make you much more susceptible to falling away at just the wrong time when your personal finish line is so close. Many Bible prophecy experts believe that references to sorcery found in Revelation 18.23 have the same root word as pharmakia, from which we get the English word drugs. There are many testimonies of believers that shared that prior to getting saved, taking drugs allowed a satanic influence to enter into their lives. It is possible that a newer, more powerful drug might be introduced during the tribulation. Resist all drugs with all your might. You don't want to go there, friend. That is not the solution. Jesus is the solution. I like the idea of a personal finish line and think of it often. To finish well means that we run with purpose the course set before us, whatever that is. Your course isn't found in a sports contest somewhere. It's the seven-year tribulation period itself. 1 Corinthians 9.24 uses a principle from sports to make an important point. Run in such a way that you may win. Run for as long as you can and exert all your energy to finishing well. This is the time to wake up and fully accept that you now find yourself in the most difficult period in human history. Know that it is your personal responsibility to be strong while on your knees in prayer and to help others to the best of your ability. You are surrounded by witnesses. To finish well, realize that you are not alone. As stunning as this may sound to you right now, did you know that you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses? In Hebrews 12, 1 through 2, it says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We, those that have gone before you in faith, including those caught up during the rapture, are a part of the completed work of Christ. We are His, and you are His. And so we rejoice in your running the race as you are led by the Holy Spirit to cross your personal finish line. Survive through the tribulation. To finish well, you should not be thinking, I need to survive through the tribulation so that I could reach the millennium. Although that might be possible and this is going to be very blunt, it is statistically unlikely. Instead, you should be thinking, I need to rely on the saving work of Jesus and the promise of salvation so that if I die, I will be instantaneously in heaven that very moment. My great fear for you, friend, is that you will delay or put off your repentance and then be killed before you can call out to Jesus for salvation, waiting until the last minute. What happens if you are killed while you sleep? You'll never see death coming. 
let me put it another way, and I'm terribly sorry to jolt you, but without the ability to buy or sell, without the ability to sustain your home or apartment, or to buy food and medical supplies, it is unlikely that you will last all seven years of the tribulation. To this statistical improbability, add that you might be caught up in one of the terrible judgments which will affect all mankind. You might be infected with a terminal pestilence or hit with a hailstone flaming with fire and soaked in blood. That comes from Revelation 8, 7. Or killed by raving mad lunatics that are perpetrating unspeakable and demonically energized violence to rape, plunder, and seize valuables. You might fall during a war in a remote battlefield or from chaos in your very own neighborhood by violent people. So faced with such great odds, you must think about the real solution. Get the foundation right. Being born again, saved by grace through Jesus Christ, is the 100% solution, period. If you are saved, then you know that you will prevail. When you die, guess what? You are immediately in the presence of the Lord. That is the real plan. Listen to me now. Sure, make every effort to survive because that extends your ability to influence others for good. If you can, you should play a strong role in helping them along the way and hopefully disciple them in their young and immature faith. Help them in their understandings and young faith in Jesus, but every hour of every day counts. Make sense? The earth is in the process of great judgment and destruction. It is not our home anymore. Heaven is our home, and eventually the new Jerusalem and new earth will become our forever home. Extraordinary promises for those that overcome. Let's read a few verses that will encourage you. There are many promises that you will receive if you overcome the tribulation period. Just listen to what the Word of God says. In Revelation 2, 7, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. In Revelation 2, 11, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. The second death is described in Revelation 21.8. But for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 2.17 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, to him I will give some of the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone and a new name written on the stone, which no one knows but he who receives it. Revelation 2, 26 and 27 says, He who overcomes and he who keeps my deeds until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of the potter are broken to pieces, as I also have received authority from my Father. Revelation 3.5 says, He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life, and I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Revelation 3.12 says, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will not go out from it any more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. And finally, Revelation 3.21 says, He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Final words. Brothers and sisters, I believe what needed to be said to you has been said. It is heartbreaking 
to know that you are witnessing the terrible events unfolding during the seven-year tribulation period. But we are with you in a common bond of love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that revelation means the unveiling of Jesus Christ as he concludes the long-promised redemption from the events of the fall of mankind in Genesis 3. I pray that you will be humbled enough to turn to Jesus now and to receive his gift of salvation. But be quick and don't delay even a minute. I urge you to make the decision that will determine your eternal destiny, either heaven or hell, eternal bliss in heaven or eternal damnation in the lake of fire. You choose. Choose well, friend. Choose life. Before I go, if you want to be saved right now, follow my sample prayer, but mean it with all your heart and mind. This prayer is identical to the one I offered at the very beginning of the presentation, but now perhaps, having learned so much more, you see your need and now you are indeed ready to yield to Christ. These are my words, but I urge you to pray along with me. God, thank you for loving me. I am so sorry for my sins. I want to turn away from them. I renounce them. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. So please forgive me. Wash away my sins. I trust in Jesus Christ to save me. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Make me into the person you want me to be and give me the strength to live for you. I surrender everything to you, my heart, my mind, my resources, and commit to follow you for the rest of my life and to the best of my ability. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer and meant it, welcome to your future with Jesus Christ and your eternal family. We, your brothers and sisters that have gone before you, We'll rejoice when we see you soon. May you find comfort in these words. Benediction. Let me now close, not with my own words, but selected benedictions spanning the entire word of God. May you be greatly affirmed, encouraged, and strengthened. I highly encourage you to memorize them. Numbers 6, 24 through 27. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. So they shall invoke my name on the sons of Israel, and I then will bless them. From Psalm 19:14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Romans 15, verses 5 through 6. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 15, 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 16, 25 through 27. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret for long ages past, but now is manifested and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the eternal God, has been made known to all the nations, leading to obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be the glory forever. Amen. 2 Corinthians thirteen fourteen, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Galatians six eighteen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. 
Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Philippians 4.20 Now to our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Philippians 4.23 The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 and 24 Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he who calls you, and he also will bring it to pass. 2 Thessalonians 2, 16 and 17. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. 2 Thessalonians 3.16 Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all. 1 Timothy 1.17 Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hebrews 13.20 and 21 Now the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter 4.11 Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves, it is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter 5, verses 10 and 11. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. 2 Peter 3.18 But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and and to the day of eternity. Amen. Jude 1, 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Revelation 1, 5 through 6. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood, and he has made us to be a kingdom, priest to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Revelation seven twelve, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Revelation twenty two twenty one, The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. Final greetings. As I conclude, let me speak on behalf of all those that have gone before you. We know the tribulation will be very severe, but hopefully you will come away from this presentation knowing that you are not alone. Indeed, you are loved by many multitudes that have gone before you. There is great hope in our common bond in Jesus, the Christ, the one and only Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords. We will worship him when we are reunited and enjoy such 
fellowship among our new forever family that words fail to describe all that is in store for us there. After all, it says as much in 1 Corinthians 2.9. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love Him. And because of that, read 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58 with a new awareness and appreciation for our great victory in Christ. It says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Godspeed. May the Lord be with you in these days. You will prevail. You will finish well. We will see you soon. Amen. We love you and we'll see you soon. We love you and we will see you soon. We love you and we'll see you soon. We love you and we will see you soon. We love you and we will see you soon. 여러분 사랑해요. 그리고 좀 이따 봬요. We love you and we'll see you soon. We love you and we'll see you soon. Los amamos y nos vemos pronto. And one last thing, we love you and we'll see you soon, beloved. We love you and we'll see you soon.